Dear friends in Christ, the glory of the Lord has shone upon us and shall be ever manifest among us until the day of his return. Through the rhythms of times and seasons, let us celebrate the mysteries of salvation. Let us recall the year's culmination, the Easter triduum of the Lord, his last supper, his crucifixion, his burial, and his rising, celebrated between the evening of the first day of April and the evening of the third day of April. Each Easter, as on each Sunday, the Holy Church makes present the great and saving deed by which Christ has forever conquered sin and death. From Easter are reckoned all the days we keep holy. Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, will occur on the 17th day of February. The ascension of the Lord will be commemorated on the 13th day of May. Pentecost, the joyful conclusion of the season of Easter, will be celebrated on the 23rd of May. And this, <clears throat> this year, the first Sunday of Advent, will be on the 28th of November. Likewise, the Pilgrim Church proclaims the Passover of Christ and the Feast of the Holy Mother of God, and the Feast of the Apostles and Saints, and in the commemoration of the faithful departed. To Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come, Lord of time and history, be endless praise forever and ever. Amen. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Shh. 
Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Here ends the lesson. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the lesson. I have struggled to write a sermon for this week, or to be more specific, I have written about five different sermons and have struggled to figure out which way to go. I had hoped to spend this joyful morning in remembrance of the baptism of our Lord. I had hoped to wax poetic on the meaning of baptism and the Lordship of Christ, but a pressing and immediate concern has arisen in light of last week's events and in culmination of the last four years, and indeed the last five decades of American political life. I have received messages from many of you asking me to address what has occurred. The following is my attempt to do so in a way that is honest and edifying for the Christian life. Some of you might disagree with me. That is okay. I only ask that you hear me. The immediate concern is how we are to be Christian in this age. A first note, I will say that to be a Christian means confessing Christ as Lord. Jesus is Lord is the oldest creed of the church. We who are Christians are bound by our baptism and our vows to recognize him and him alone as the king of the universe. This means that our allegiance to Christ supersedes all other allegiances. Our vows to him are of ultimate importance, and to place anything else in his stead is nothing but idolatry. To follow Christ as our Lord and Master means also that the ordinary means of politics, that is, the way things are done, are not available to us. We do not enact the reign of God through violence, coercion, fear, hatred, dubious rhetoric, or any other forceful means. Remember that Satan offered Christ political power in his temptations, and Christ refused. We are required to find new, faithful, even holy ways of engaging the problems of the world around us without succumbing to the world's ways. As a caveat, this does not mean that we withdraw from the world and become sectarians. It does not mean that we throw up our hands in defeat when at first we don't succeed. It does not mean that we are therefore impotent to affect actual change in the world around us and in our communities, neighborhoods, and homes. It does mean that we must wholly and fully rely on the Holy Spirit to direct our paths and that whatever direction we choose to go, we remain open to the Spirit's movement in our lives. What we saw on Wednesday was not new. It was an idolatrous mob which saw its idolatry of an America which has never existed as being more important than the lives of their fellow idolaters, of the members of Congress, of the Capitol Police, or of anyone else who stood in their way. The Bible is filled to the brim with such stories. The result is always the same. The wages of sin is death. But the insurrectionists on Wednesday did not get there by themselves. They have long fermented in their passions, aided by a circular and sycophantic right-wing propaganda machine. From YouTube to Facebook and Twitter to 4chan and 8chan to Nazi message boards and parlor, a veritable smorgasbord of propaganda awaited and awaits the curious and agreeable. 
St. Peter says in his first letter, For your enemy the devil prowls around like a hungry lion looking for someone to devour. In the old days, ideas of rebellion lurked in pamphlets and in underground meeting halls. Today, one need only go so far as one's pocket to access a trove of sin and destruction. To be a Christian means that you will not be taken in by such devious ideas. As St. Paul says in Colossians, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. He wasn't talking about Voltaire or Plato. He was talking about Tucker Carlson, Jordan Peterson, and QAnon. He was talking about all those who use alternative facts, those who twist and sicken the public debate to suit their own agenda. All the while, politicians and personalities stoke the flames of resentment because it makes good fodder for fundraising campaigns, and we retreat to our enclaves of social media wherein we need not worry about encountering criticism for our ideas or actions. But we must live in what is real. We cannot simply ignore the repairman, the office mate, the neighbor, or family members in real life. Short of a restraining order, there is no block button in the real world. I am not advocating that you stop to kick every barking dog. You do not have to attend every argument that you are invited to. But for those with whom you are already in relationship, the Christian response to sin remains unchanged for 2,000 years. We tell them the good news. Christ is Lord and has risen from the dead, so that as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. And this therefore means that our hope does not rest on who controls the Senate. Our trust does not belong to whomever occupies the Oval Office. Certainly those with political power can affect us positively or negatively. They can elevate or destroy whole swaths of our society. And they should be lobbied in accordance with justice and goodwill. But while they can destroy the body, they cannot destroy the soul. And our faith rests in him who rose from the Jordan waters who was raised upon the cross, and who has risen from the grave. In the words of 2 Timothy, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, and having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away into myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. And so, I will say, and continue to say to any who will listen, that the Psalms tell us not to put our trust in princes, that no king can be saved by a mighty army, no strong man by his strength, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and because of all of this, I shall fear no evil. Because there is no sin that can silence the gospel. There is no one who is unreachable or irredeemable. Being a Christian is hard. Being like Christ is hard. Loving your neighbor, loving your enemy, loving yourself can be hard. But difficulty is not an excuse for surrender. Unpopularity is not an excuse for silence. Uncomfortableness is not an excuse for toleration of that which corrupts and destroys the children of God. I do not mean to leave here to begin a personal crusade. I am not trying to convince you to become Don Quixote. 
I am saying that when you are presented with the appropriate opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ, that you do so with love, patience, and care. And if the other is not receptive, Jesus tells us to move along. Now, being honest, I know that there are many here for whom there is no love lost between them and the political right. Do not misunderstand me. Lest you believe I am here only to scratch your ears, the sins of the left and the center are numerous. It just happens that the sins of the right have now risen to a magnitude of national crisis. But to follow Christ means that one cannot kneel at the altar of either. Certainly Christians can have ideas that might match with the left or the right. Christians can agree with certain points or policies of the left or the right. And reasonable people can disagree. But there is a difference between holding an idea and an idea holding you. The insurrectionists on Wednesday were captivated by an idea, captivated by a story, and it was not the story of Christ. It is your job as a Christian, whether you lean left or right, to always remember that we have one story. And it is not the story of a political party. It is not the story of a politician. It is not the story of a pundit. It is the story of Christ. That is our story. That is the defining movement of our lives. That is who we are as Christians. And we should share it with others because if we don't, they will find another story. Last week, a couple of days before the attempted coup, a prominent pastor in Bossier held an event in which he decried the shrinking of liberties for American Christians, in which he rebuffed and mocked uh, another Baptist, a theologian, for his truthful assertion that Christians in America must be wary of the God and country Christian nationalism that is on the rise in this nation in which he denounced moderate patriotism and called for his followers to love God and love this nation, a stunning perversion of the great commandment, as God does not command us to love nations, but neighbors. Other speakers of this event included a congressman, a far-right radio personality, and a far-right activist, all of whom played some variation on the tune that Christians in this nation are under attack and that only the conservative movement can save the country, and therefore the church. One speech called Christians to rise up and take back our country just two days before the storming of the Capitol, which left five people dead and a nation scarred. Another speech lamented Christian leaders who work in ra racial reconciliation, Pastors who support marriage equality and churches that welcome transgender and gender non-binary people, quoting scripture the whole way. And it all took place in front of an overblown image of an American flag and ended with a fireworks show. These Christian leaders whip up rebellious attitudes because nothing makes them feel Christian like pretending to be persecuted. As the psalmist says, they scoff and speak maliciously. Out of their haughtiness, they plan oppression. They set their mouths against the heavens, and their evil speech runs through the world. And so the people turn to them and find in them no fault. So then these are the wicked, always at ease, they increase their wealth. They believe they are glorifying God in their delusion of oppression. But if you want truly to glorify God, learn to speak as the psalmist does. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon the earth. Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I do not have the time or inclination to counter every ridiculous and absurd claim made at this event last week. 
I bring it up only to show you that this is what our community imagines when they hear or see the word Christian. And that's on us. We have not, though we are trying, made it clear that there are Christian communities in this city which not only welcome LGBT people, but celebrate them. We have not made it clear that there are churches for whom caring for the poor is not a hobby, but a way of life. We have not made it clear that Jesus Christ is not a member of any American political party and cannot be defined by American political terms. We certainly have our work cut out for us. But thankfully, being a Christian means that we do not have to do this work alone. We Christians exist in community, and we will work together to love and serve God and our neighbors. Because we will not be motivated by fear. We will not be motivated by hatred. We will not be motivated by a desire for political control. We will be motivated by the gospel of Jesus Christ for all people. As St. Paul says in Romans, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith. Everyone who has faith. Straight people, LGBT people, white people, black people, conservatives, liberals, everyone. And we live and work and play and pray together in this community, and I am not ashamed that we do so. Our diversity strengthens our faith. And it is hard sometimes, but we are still here. And I hope our very existence proves a rebuke to the poisonous idolatry that wears the cross but never bears it. I hope that the church in America can learn to distinguish the difference between Christians in America and American Christians. I hope that we can one day see that what it means to believe in a holy Catholic and apostolic church is that no one nation can lay claim to the promises of Christ. And that Christians everywhere, from China to Palestine and Zimbabwe to Mexico, are our siblings in Christ. I hope that we can learn that because Jesus is Lord, Caesar is not. I hope that we can repent of the trappings of Christendom and imperial Christianity and learn the faith once handed down by the saints. That we can realize the dream of the prophets to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. I hope that we will be Christian before we are Republican or Democrats. And I pray with every ounce of my being that Christ will greet us with that promised blessing, in all these you welcomed me, and that our ears never hear the fearful words, depart from me, I never knew you. I will leave you with this quote from J.R.R. Tolkien. I wish it had not happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. The following is the great litany, which is normally read during Lent, but the prayer book provides for the reading of the litany during times of national anxiety. I ask that you join me. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation, good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity, good Lord, deliver us from all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. 
that it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into the harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice, love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart, as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, or tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. O God, we have heard with our ears, and our fathers have declared unto us the noble works that thou didst in their days and in the old time before them. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. From our enemies defend us, O Christ. Graciously behold our afflictions. With pity behold the sorrows of our hearts. Mercifully forgive the sins of thy people. Favorably with mercy hear our prayers. O Son of David, have mercy upon us. Both now and ever vouchsafe to hear us, O Christ. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Graciously hear us, O Lord Christ. Let us pray. We humbly beseech thee, O Father, mercifully to look upon our infirmities, and for the glory of thy name, turn from us all those evils that we most justly have deserved, and grant that in all our troubles we may put our whole trust and confidence in thy mercy, and evermore serve thee in holiness and pureness of living to thy honor and glory, through our only mediator and advocate, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 